So I think it's important to, to think about the bigger picture of what you're trying to accomplish, really. Um, to incorporate these other factors into it. And, uh, and, and not, so a little bit of humor, not a lot, needs to be appropriate, you know, all those kinds of things, right? But you want it to be light, you want it to be, you want the audience to be with you, right? You want them to be, so a little bit of humor, um, definitely some gee whiz factor, but don't, don't overdo it to the point that it's just all gee whiz, right? You have to have some substance in it. Um, uh, and I've erred on the conservative side of that, and I've learned, you know, not to be so conservative with the gee whiz factor because it, it plays well, right? Um, and, you know, get the relevance message in there. Why is this important to people? Or if, when you see this thing, do you go, oh, I wish I had that, or that's cool. You know, when you say, that's cool, when you see it, right? And you know that. You can, you, can, you can feel those things. And so the other thing is, you know, um, to get experience talking to people. You know, I, I, I was a training instructor at Digital. I was an SE, so I did stand-up presentations for years for, for customers around technology. Um, I learned a lot about connecting technology to business during that time. So when I was a systems engineer and I would talk about very technical subjects, I always had to bring it back to what was the business impact. So kind of practicing those kinds of skills and then just building yourself up to larger and larger audiences uh, as the as the as the as the occasion arises. And the the, rea the reality is, you want to take every chance you get to do some public speaking because when you get out in front of that first audience that's got two thousand or five thousand people, um, it's really challenging. You know. On the other hand, it's really rewarding. And if you're well prepared and you can stay in the now, you're not worried about what you're going to say or what you just said. If you're well prepared so that you can stay in the now, then uh, then you'll give a great pitch because and and I think you have to believe in it. You got to be telling your own story around the technology, right? You can't have somebody else write it for you. You got to write it yourself. You got to tell it because it has to come from here for the audience to be with you and and to feel your passion. I think that's. That's really important. There's a couple of um, particular events that come to mind. Um, I got to be honest with you. I'm not sure we've ever built a demo that was better than the very first demo that I gave, which was in uh, January of 1998 at the Health Information Management Show. And this is just another kind of example of Cisco luck, right? Because um, I didn't really know what I was doing at the time. I had just started, right? And I, I had big ideas and everything, but, you know, and this one just to happen, turn, happened to turn out well. And anyway, the, we were working on this show, and, and there was this very interesting electronic medical record application. But honestly, from a demo perspective, it was it was pretty blah. It was just you know it's a database and you can go and look people's records up and things like that. From a business perspective, huge impact, right? Being able to, you know, automatically check for prescription dependencies and things like that, you know, big deal. You know, we should have had electronic medical records a long time ago. That's another story. Um, but you know, from a demo perspective, there's no gee whiz factor, right? And so one of the things we found that, that makes a demo a good demo is when, first of all, it has relevance. So it has that business impact, right? Um, the second thing is when, when you look at it and you go, oh, gosh, I wish I had one of those, you know? I, I could use that in my job, right? I, I'll, I'll explain an example of that recently. Um, and then thirdly, uh, humor. If you, can, if you can get some humor in there so you're having a good time, the audience is with you, that's good. And then fourthly is the, the human impact. And that's really, this first demo that we did had all of those things and, it, and it, it touched on them well. So let me describe it for you. And I, you know, I have a VHS videotape and I need to move that onto into digital format so that, because it's probably gonna rot, you know, and I'm, I'll lose it, but, uh, and I really need to go back and watch it, but it, and at least preserve it for posterity, right? So in this demonstration, so I was working on that project and I was like, you know what, there's no pizzazz here. And John's like, I want something with sex. I want something that, you know, that, you know, n not literally, you know, he wanted something that, you know, has sizzle, you know, and so I'm like, oh boy, this is the first one out. This thing does not have sizzle. What am I going to do? You know? So I was surfing online, trying to find some interesting like medical device that connected to the network. 
And I stumbled across this company called Accuson, and they're here in the Bay Area, and they make ultrasound machines. And uh, the guy who ran engineering for Accuson, his wife was pregnant, and he wanted, she had just gone and get, gotten this uh, ultrasound, and he's like, I should be able to see those images, right? And if I could web into the ultrasound machine, then you know I could just go look at those images. So, well, here's an ultrasound machine that has like 20 CPUs in it and all kinds of digital signal processing technology and everything. And so he simply put an Apache web server on one of the CPUs, and then he did some rather clever stuff with uh, the ability to put a codec that ran on the DSPs in the box that uh, would do a lossless decompression of the image because if you're gonna have a doctor view your x-ray or something, it has to be full resolution, no loss, you can't have artifacts because it could m make you think that there's something wrong or something that's not there, for example. So he built an interesting applet that ran on the browser that got downloaded from the server so that when you connected to the ultrasound machine, you got the applet and then it would decode these lossless images so a doctor or somebody could give a second opinion so on stage, here was the curtain of the stage, and in the back part of the curtain, we built this little curtained cutout where we had a hospital bed and an ultrasound machine and a technician and a live mom. And <laughs> so the curtains opened, and it was very nicely lit, so it was really soft and everything, and the curtains opened, and John walked over and talked to the mom, said, you know, do you want to know if it's a boy or a girl? <laughs> you know, things like that. And, uh, and then the technician is giving the ultrasound. And here up on the image magnification, you know, you see this live baby. You know, and it was just awe-inspiring, right, to be able to see this. And then they finish that up, the curtains close, and we walk over to this PC, and we looked at the same images that they had just taken on the ultrasound machine. And it had such impact because you realized that PC could be anywhere. And then we follow that with a case study of this doctor in Massachusetts who is now able to see you know, four times as many patients and she was the real specialist and she could stay at Mass General and then the, the hospitals all around the state could use her as a resource and this and that. And it had great impact from a gee whiz factor, from a human interest factor, you know, from a, from a comedy factor. And so I gotta say, even though it was the first demo we gave, and we, we went on to give it about eight or ten more times. Even We even gave it one day to um, Al Gore and Victor Chernomerdin came to Cisco and brought their contingency of this collaborative effort between Cisco and, and Russia and, and such. And uh, we gave it to those folks that day. And uh, it, made, it made a big, big impact on a lot of people. And then it was kind of fun to go back seven years later to the HIMSS show again and do another demo that was you know, kind of up to date. And, uh, a very friendly audience. The healthcare industry is very interested in technology and, and how it can help. You know, they, there's a big gap there.